right, so in this video I would like to introduce a, a new, um, I guess, class of fields. And if you've been doing the practice problems for these videos, this probably will seem pretty familiar. These are called adjoint fields. Adjoint fields. And basically the idea behind these is we're going to take some field, let's say, let's say this is our field, uh, F, I'll call it, and we want to we want to take this field and and add in some number that's not already in there so some number and we want to put that in <coughs> excuse me put that in the field as well as anything else that we might need to keep this a field so so let's see what i mean by this let's say let's say instead of f let's say we have the rationals so q and instead of some number, let's say we have uh, the square root of 2. That's, that's clearly not a rational number, so it's not already in this set. So we want to take the rationals and we want to throw in the square root of 2, as well as anything else that we might need to keep this a field. Okay, so the, um, the notation for this would be uh, q, and then in parentheses we would have the square root of 2. And this is read q adjoin the square root of 2. And we are we're going to define this as well, we we're going to we're going to want we're going to still have every rational number in there. So we need to represent that somehow. So let's say let's say a where uh, I'll I'll write it when I'm finished with this part, but a is going to be a rational number. We want the square root of 2 to be in there. So we're going to have the square root of 2. But now, in order to keep this closed, we would we would need to, or at least first of all, close under addition. So we would need to be able to take any rational number and add the square root of 2 to it, and we would still need that to be in the field in order for this to be closed under addition. So in other words, we need to be able to take any rational number and add the square root of 2. So we could just put an addition there. Okay, likewise, we need to be able to take um, the the any rational number and multiply it by the square root of 2, and we would still need that to be in the field. So we're going to have, in other words, a, a rational multiple of the square root of 2 to be in there, and we're going to need that to be closed under multiplication. So, it, um, so this is going to be our set, and a and b are going to be rational numbers, and it turns out this defines a field. And you can check that if you want. Um, I'll kind of go through a couple of the steps, I guess, right here. Actually, first of all, some some I guess some examples of things that would be in there. For instance, um, uh, seven plus two root two would be an element of this. You join root two. Um, I don't know, uh, one nineteenth plus, uh, uh, two hundred over seven times the square root of two would also be an element of this. Okay? As long as these two numbers are rationals, and then we have, we can use the square root of two however we want, it'll be something in this set. Okay, so, I mean, to show to show closure under addition, that's pretty easy. Let's say we have two elements in here. Um, let's say, I guess I could use uh, m plus n times the square root of 2. That's one element. And we would want to add, to show closure under addition, we would not, we would want to add that to another element in there. So we could say, I don't know, x plus y square root of 2. Well, we could rearrange this. Oh, and by the way, um, uh, m and x, y are rationals. Okay. Well, this is just we could just rearrange this. M plus x plus uh, n plus y times the square root of 2. And as we know, the rationals are a ring, so a 
irrational plus irrational is irrational. So that's a rational number, that's a rational number. So we have something that looks like that. And so this is an element of Q adjoin root 2. Um, multiplication is going to go pretty much the same way. Um, and then to actually show this was a field, you would need to show that it's it's commutative ring. Um, it has a unity. Uh, the unity is pretty easy. Just let a equal 1, b equal 0. Then, then uh, a plus b square root of 2 is equal to 1 plus 0 times the square root of 2, which is just 1. And there's your unity. Um, you would also need to show this doesn't have any 0 divisors, and which I I think is pretty straightforward. I mean, this is these are all um, a subset of the real numbers, so the real numbers doesn't have any zero divisors. I mean, we're using the same operation, so I guess the, the same arg argument would apply there. And then you would need to show that this has uh, multiplicative inverses. So you could say that um, you know the multiplicative inverse for a plus b the square root of two would just be would just be really just one over a plus b squared root 2, and you're probably saying, well, that's not something that looks like this. Well, I mean, we could just uh, multiply by the conjugate of this, so a minus b squared root of 2 over a minus b squared root of 2, and if you multiply that out, you should get something that looks like that. Actually, I will go ahead and do that. So this is going to be, I'll just do it below. So we, we still have this here, I'm not going to change that at all a plus b square root of 2. And then we have, um, let's see, let's multiply the bottom. So a minus b root 2 over, uh, let's see, a squared. Uh, the middle term's going to cancel out. That's the whole purpose of this. So we'd have minus 2b squared, looks like. 2b squared. And then this is equal to not going to change the first term again. So a plus b root 2 times, and we could just um, split this into two fractions. So a over a squared minus 2b squared minus uh, b over a squared minus 2b squared times the square root of 2. And now look, we have, this is one big rational number. And this is one big rational number times root two. So we have we have a rational number plus a rational number times root two, and that's exactly what this is. So this uh, sorry this thing right here is is a member of this field. So it and as we sorry let me, let me get rid of those. Okay, as we can see, these two will just multiply to one. That's I mean you're multiplying by um, you have something divided by itself, so that's just going to be 1. That's 1. And so th these are, these are really are multiplicative inverses. And as we just saw, this thing is an element of the field. I'm being really sloppy right now, sorry. Okay, so the whole point I'm trying to make here is that this thing really is a field. This. So our, our idea here is we took the rationals and we threw in something that, that wasn't irrational, and we we threw in the square root of 2 and anything else that we needed to keep this a field. And you're probably saying, well, I mean, I mean, um, you could just take r. I mean, that's that has the rationals and the square root of 2 in it, and it's a field. Well, I mean, maybe there will be a situation that'll come up where we don't want, we don't need everything in r. We just need the rationals and the square root of 2. We don't need the square root of 5 or the the you know cube root of seven or something like that, and so this this really is actually pretty useful. Um, I'm going to do another example now. So same idea here. Uh, I'm going to use green again. Let's um, let's try and fi figure out what um, q adjoin the cube root of five would be. So our our idea here is we're taking the rational numbers and we're throwing in the cube root of 5 and anything else that we might need to keep this a field. Okay, well, we're still going to have the rational numbers in there. They haven't gone anywhere. So we can just represent that with an a. 
Uh, we're going to have the cube root of 5 in there. So cube root of 5. And same idea as before, we're going to need any any rational multiple of the square root of 5. So we could add a b here. And then we're going to need any rational multiple uh, plus another rational in to be in there in order to be closed. So you can add an addition there. But now, there's something a little bit different about this one. This is a cube root rather than a square root as we had before. So, um, I mean, clearly the, the cube root of 5 is going to be in there, sure. But this needs to be closed under multiplication, so we need to be able to multiply the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 5. Well, that's just the cube root of 5 squared, or you could think of this as 5 to the 2 thirds. But as of right now, we don't have a way of representing the cube root of 5 squared in, as in something of this form. So we're going to need to add on the cube root of 5 squared. And just as before, we're going to need, be able to need to multiply this by any any rational scalar. So we need to add another constant here. Okay. So let me get rid of this stuff. Okay. So such that a, b, and c are rationals. So a, b, and c are elements of q. And you might be thinking, you know, why did I stop at, at the second power? Well, let's see. If we went one more, we'd have cube root of 5 times cube root of 5 times the cube root of 5. Well, that's just the cube root of 5 cubed. So this is really just 5. But 5 can be represented by this a right here. I mean, this is just some some uh, rational number. I mean, if if we were to add on like a, like a plus d to the cube root of 5 to the third, it wouldn't be wrong, but it would just be a little bit redundant. I mean, this would really just be, this would just be 5d, which is just, I mean, you're just adding on to this. It's just an, another arbitrary constant. You would just be offsetting it by, you know, a, a factor of 5d. Okay, so this is really similar to what we had up here with the, with q adjoin uh, the square root of 2. Um, everything in this field pretty much behaves the same way as in the other one. Um, you, you just have three terms here rather than two. So let me get rid of this stuff. And we could we could do another example here. Um, what would be, um, I don't know, the, the fourth root of seven? Q adjoin the fourth root of seven. Well, I think you're starting to get the hang of this. It would just be a plus b times the fourth root of 7 plus c times the fourth root of 7 squared. And we can just keep going. Uh, I should put parentheses around that. Plus d times the fourth root of 7 cubed. And we can stop there, because if we went one more, that would just be the fourth root of 7 to the fourth, which would just be 7. So we have we have a b c d. So these are a b c and d are rationals. Okay. And as far as the requirements for this number, um, you could really put uh, almost anything there that you want. Um, it's just as long as it's not in this set. If like say if we did um, if we did q adjoin seven, well, that would just be q because seven's already in there. But I mean, you could you could do any kind of um, uh, irrational number. I mean, you could take um, the you know the twelfth root. You could say q adjoin the twelfth root of nineteen. I don't, I'm not going to write that out, but I mean, I, there would be twelve terms in there. I mean, here there this was a fourth root. We had four terms: one, two, three, four. And um, this also doesn't have to be q. I mean, you could you could say um, I don't know, R, real numbers, that's a bad R, R adjoin, I don't know, I. But I mean, really, this this would be sort of all A plus B I, 
such that A and B are real numbers. And I hope that looks familiar to you. That's just complex. So really, this one's not really interesting. Um, I mean, I is really the only thing that that um, we could really add on to R to make it bigger. So Q is really the only interesting one that we talk about. I mean, you could also do something like um, you know Z sub N join I don't know like I. That that'd be kind of weird, but you could. You could, I'm sure you could do that somehow. And oh, also you might have noticed I'm I'm picking prime numbers here. You don't have to pick prime numbers, but let's say like Q adjoin. Let's say the the square root of um, I don't know. I can't come up with an example, but if if it's not prime and say like you had oh here the the square root of eight. This would just be um, the set of a plus b square root 8 plus, no, oh, that's it, it's only a second root. So a and b are rationals. But really, the square root of 8, square root of 8 is what, 2 root 2? This is the square root of 4 times 2, yeah, 2 root 2. I don't know why I'm writing all these twos, um, but I mean this this two is just a just a uh, just another rational. I mean you'd have a you'd have a two b here rather than a just a b, so it's just offsetting it more. It's it's kind of um, kind of redundant. This would I think this would actually be the same thing as q oops q adjoin the square root of two. Pretty sure because this this two here it, the two in front isn't really adding, adding anything new to the rationals. It's just the square root of 2 that's adding stuff new. Um, so that's basically all I have right now for um, adjoint fields. Um, these come up a lot in field theory. Um, they come up occasionally in um, ring theory, um, usually when we start talking about isomorphisms. Um, so if you're interested in these, then stay tuned.